Well, the great thing about Terry was he was the perfect writing companion for me anyway, because he was very, Terry worked hard. He made sure we got the work done. Uh, and I, being a slightly lazier partner, benefited from his energy and his inspiration and all that. But he was also the, a wonderful after-work after, after work partner. He loved to drink, uh, loved to go around and have a pint, talk about lots of other things. When I first met Terry, the Beatles were just sort of breaking, and we used to queue up every, um, every time a new Beatles album came out. We were the first to queue up to, to buy it. So little things like that. Um, that I remember. He was, he was a great companion, Terry, great companion. I think we made each other laugh. Um, the great thing about having a writing team, uh, uh, the two of you, is that, you know, you bounce one thing off the other and you could tell if something hadn't worked because there was no laughter. I mean, both of us were very highly attuned to humour and laughed quite easily. So if you didn't get a laugh, that was that, that went to the bottom of the pile. Um, so you, usually, yes, because we had a a shared sense of what was funny, which was kind of more, I would say, the whimsical sort of stuff, more Spike Milligan than uh, David Frost. We shared that sort of taste in, in humour. And yeah, we, we would just chuckle a lot as we worked. Well, he was so convincing as his mother. And basically, that's what the, the woman character was, really. And Terry's mother was a lovely lady, kind of very straight sort of, uh, feet on the ground, but it had this rather nice reflective thing, so that so came out. And then Terry sort of um, exaggerated her a bit for uh, Mandy in the life of Brian, turned her into a bit more of a harridan and all that. But he seemed to be very, very comfortable inside the women's clothing, <laughs> a certain kind of woman. I don't think he, um, Eric Idle did the sort of glamorous drag, um, John Cleese did the sort of frightening <laughs> drag, and Terry was the most convincing, yes, he was really, really good at that. But he could. You know, Terry was a great performer. He could conjure up all sorts of different characters. And physically, he was a very, very skilled, um, a very skilled performer. I remember the one sketch he did, um, which involved him playing um, Tchaikovsky's 1812 while escaping from a sack, three padlocks and some chains. And Terry did this thing and rolled in, and he actually managed to just get his hand out, played the piano, bong, 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 then loosen it a bit, bong, 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 bong. And after 35 seconds, he was out of the sack, and da da. And it re really looked really, really good, but it was an incredibly dangerous thing to do, uh, rolling about and crashing around and missing his footing and all that. He did it superbly. I used to write with Terry, and, and he had a house in Black Prince Road, which was down in Waterloo. And they were, this was 1966, 67, we were writing for the Frost Report and they just built these new public toilets on the end of Lambeth Walk and they wanted a local dignitary to help open them and um, they didn't have anybody apart from Terry. Uh, they had some writers living there. So Terry and myself um, were, were escorted out to open the new toilets on Black Prince Road and be the first to use them. We went in there. A band playing outside, and we went in, and the, the mayor, I think, was also at the urinals with us, and uh, I couldn't couldn't do a thing. I'm afraid it was sort of quite overcome, <laughs> and we laughed and laughed at that for a long, long time. But then we were, yeah. There are many, many things that I I do remember about Diatel, and and in the days to come, I doubt, doubtless I shall be able to sort of reflect on them.